Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the Sound Test Room. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to set up a Bluetooth mouse to use with your iPad. Now, you can use this with your iPad without screen recording. Of course, it's just, you know, for accessibility. However, for people who screen record tutorials or videos or demos like me, and I want to screen record, the problem has always been that you can't, there is no way to, there was no pointer, so people didn't know what you were doing. Uh, and also now, since it's got stereo recording, the screen recorder, and it sounds great, it would be nice to make more screen recorded videos, but also have the pointer, because in the past, you had to edit the points in, in uh, whatever, you know, in LumaFusion or whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> I have a TechNet... Uh, BM three o seven while what Bluetooth Bluetooth mouse super cheap off Amazon. Okay, now I must give a big shout out to Midge Slayton, the audio dabbler, the audio dabbler people. I'll put a link into his YouTube channel. He did a video for this. Uh, I think it was the other day or last week, a few days ago, and it was just I was so impressed. Because, you know, to be nailed to do pointing and stuff. So I'm going to share it all with you as well. So I'm going to show you what to do now. Here's the thing. Let's go into settings here. You'll see I have Bluetooth switched on. Now, you'll see no pointer at all at the moment, which is why this is confusing for people. With They screen record. So I'm going to tap on Bluetooth on. And you'll see that the BM30X mouse is not connected. And that the H9, that's something else, but that's not connected either. Now, when you first turn your mouse on, when you first get it, um, I'm going to turn it on now. So I've just turned it on. You'll see now it says connected there. But even connecting it and pairing it with the iPad still didn't show up there and wouldn't, um, you know, still doesn't work. I'm moving it moving it around doesn't do nothing right so what what's the problem here so Mitch has just sussed all this out which is absolutely amazing and saves everybody loads of time looking around because it's not that obvious right so you scroll up your settings here and you go into accessibility so accessibility is for under general accessibility and then you go to uh, below where it says vision the next block of uh, menus is physical and motor you tap on touch and you see where it says assistive touch at the very top. You tap on that and switch on. Now, as soon as I switch this on, you're going to see a little square appear in the corner here. And you're also going to see my mouse pointer, which is nice and big, appear in the middle of the screen. There it is. Now, look. Now I'm moving the mouse around and we can point away. Now, down here in the corner of the screen, you'll see that that's gone nice and dark now. Now, if I use my roller wheel... I can roll up and down. I can, this is the tracking speed. So if I slow that down, so you can set, I like quite a fast tracking speed. So that's fine for me. Um, you can always show uh, the thing right now. <clears throat> where are we? Here, if I right click on this, this brings me up to uh, uh, another menu I can use where you can see you can custom different things, notifications, device control, take you to the control center. If I tap on that, there you go. And you can see that I'm screen recording and this will fade out, you see, because I have idle opacity for this set to 20%. Now, if I set this to higher, you'll see it fade back in. So if you always wanted to see your control center, uh, options for your assistive touch you can leave that there but i don't need to see that really so we can fade that i know that if i right click now also you can customize the controls and if you are a mouse has more controls you can add more controls in so you could see like you know it said that's a non or you could set it to dock or double tap etc etc well, we don't go, and that's for you to do, you know. I mean, this is fine for me because I'm I'm only using it as a pointer. So go back to touch here, like this, and we'll go back to accessibility. And what we'll just do is go to the bottom here, so hold, hold and swipe, hold and swipe up as you normally would. Let me just swipe up again and see it there. 
and I'm going to close settings like that, just by swiping at the same. And my microphone is going through AUM and the Steinberg UR44. And I have Bruce Free switched on, as you can see, I'll take it out because it takes out all that lovely hiss. So now I want to show people what to do. It's dead, dead easy because I've got a pointer. So we'll tap on this little plus here and add an audio channel. We'll go to the top here, tap on this plus, and we'll add an audio unit extension, pull down, tap on search. And you can do this, I'm going to do it with my fingers, but you can do it with this as well. So if I go synth, Master one, there's so synth M. We can tap on that now. And it loads synth master one. I'm going to turn the volume down because it's quite loud. <clears throat> then I'm going to tap on my little toaster icon here. And I'm going to connect that to my Steinberg UR44's MIDI port where my MIDI controller is plugged in. Tap on that. Open the synth master now. And I can now play it. So, hang on with just one sec. So I can now play Synthmaster with my MIDI controller or move it around with my mouse pointer, my mouse as normal, you know, hold and uh, hold and move. Now, let's see, what else can we do? Let's see, browser. Let's go to... Um, read click on my one of my favorite leads which is this one go back to synth now and of course you can make all your control your, your your adjustments now with your um if we double tap on that it'll expand it and we can Stuff. Oh, I, I so love that sound. <laughs> but yeah, so it's fantastic now you see that you can do all your stuff, screen recording, and have a pointer. And it will save the guys that do this properly, like there's Dave Lee and Nelly. I'm, I'm not sure what he uses to screen record, but Jacob, Jacob uses the iPad, spends a lot of time putting pointers in. Will save him some time, I guess, if he used a, 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 a mouse like this. It uh, would be uh, useful. Of course, it's just, you just, it's just great stuff. Look, you can just do this. You can close your. Make sure you don't close the app that's taking the audio for your voice through. So we could just mi we can minimize this as normal. We can just hold it like this and say, "All oh, right, okay, let's just let's just uh, do something else here. Let's open another synth or whatever, you know. Go make adjustments, move your screen along. Fantastic stuff. Go like 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 look 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 look. What's 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 this? Look, let's go to Optagon. <laughs> I do like a bit of Optagon. <laughs> Then we can do what we normally do. We can choose which one to open. If we want to close it, we can. It's done. But you've got to remember, the key thing to remember is, is it will not work initially. You'll think there's something the matter, and it's not. Your, your roller wheel works as well. You, you need to go to, you need to pair it, we'll switch it on, but it still won't appear in your Bluetooth settings. What you need to do is go to accessibility, touch, assistive touch and the first place you want to go is down to devices and then you can go connected devices or bluetooth so first of it will be that won't be there go to bluetooth devices and then you can find it there and connect it there and then it's all going to work each time you do it sort of thing so that's that it's just a little bit of a 
a long-winded way of doing it, but I guess it's part of assisted touch. So, yeah. Guys, thank you very, very much for watching. Um, go home now. Takes us to our screen. See, like this. So we just open it or right-click. Brings up our little assistive touch menu. And then we can, uh, you know, do what we need to do. But it's nice because if you open something like, say, St. Just Organ, and you think, well, I don't want to do all the swipey up stuff and things. and Still Synth Master. But we can right click on it and just click home. And it, But it hasn't closed it, bearing in mind. If we open up our thing, you'll see it's still there. They're all still there. Could close settings, close. That's it. Works exactly the same as pointing the screen. Of course, I can use the screen. So for certain things, like I would like use the screen still, but... I think it's going to help a lot of people understand what's more likely going on, the iPad screen, uh, while I'm talking. Things aren't just automatically happening without you being able to see what I'm actually clicking and pressing. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Please consider becoming a patron or making a one-off donation, please. Uh, also, check out the Audio Dabbler. Smitch's channel, which is super informative for all kinds of all kinds of great stuff. I, I kid you not. Uh, it's just a it's a great place to learn stuff. And he's a he's a really, really good teacher. Listen, top job, cool beans. See you guys later. Ta -ta.